this is just within the law faculty what we do um, and again I was kind of setting this from the point of our main tool is, is Camtasia Darius when I came into the department Darius there Darius Dr. Darius William was using uh, Camtasia and we kind of led on with it um, and kind of started to grow it a bit more um, I suppose the first thing you have to do is kind of define the problem all right and essentially what's going on is you're trying to record okay um, then you're trying to produce it and then you're trying to deliver it okay and essentially what happens is the customer gets present which is the recording um, of the lecture okay um, I'm going to be kind of more technical um, uh, I'm not very good with pedagogical and big words all right okay um, so technical stuff um, it is there is technical aspects to it they always try and make the <coughs> software as easy as possible but um, this slide is about wheel reinvention um, it's an old chestnut this has been done before all you're doing is recording a lecture okay it has been done before and so we didn't need to go off and build another E star as I call it or another E something okay it's already been done um, then there's the software of smoke and mirrors um, there's loads of products out there um, that'll do loads of things um, but essentially they're doing six things okay um, they're recording audio, audio they process the audio they capture the screen and they process the capture they run the powerpoint and they run the add in for powerpoint they also may have a webcam Okay. Um, so that's complicated for a computer why is it complicated for a computer because it's juggling lots of processes okay computers to do lots of things all at the one time okay because it's trying to record it's trying to process audio it's trying to screen capture it's trying to run powerpoint it's doing a whole lot of things at once okay so then you get into toy selection okay and <clears throat> when i kind of looked at it um you can go with a, pro a, pro a proprietary software format which is lock-in okay it means you're tied to the type of software and you can go with proprietary hardware formats okay uh, which is even worse lock-in the vent you're tied to the vendor okay um, and what i see mainly here is that there's a real need for common standards um, and they're hard to get when people are trying to make money out of these sort of things um, when we started I wanted to go open source um, with Matterhorn and uh, Big and uh, Big Blue Blo uh, Big Blue Button. Um, there's a OpenCast project. Any of you come across it? Okay, it's for um, record, uh, video recording and all this kind of learning stuff that's on there. Um, but what happened to us was it was about I suppose two years ago that way, um, and. Matterhorn was on 0 0.6 release, so in terms of software, it hadn't even achieved its first version. Okay, so what we would say was was in beta. Okay, it wasn't fully fully developed. It wasn't tested. Okay, um, big blue button didn't exist. Okay, it wasn't there. Um, I'm trying to think of the previous version of open source that was there, um, but it wasn't. You couldn't run it. Um, the other thing with this side of the game is that um, in terms of Matterhorn and, and these projects, open source projects, support couldn't be bought. Okay? There was no company providing support for the above projects. What that meant was a company couldn't make money out of providing support. And that meant that A, they weren't going to support. If, if they can't make money out of it, they can't see a business case for it. Um, the other part of this was on Matterhorn, the discussion boards were quiet. Um, the, community is, um, the community also was a concern on my side because I'm the guy that's doing the developing, I'm doing the implementation. Okay. Um, any of you heard of IRC, the Internet Relay Chat? Okay. This is about 10 years before Twitter. All right. It's what 
program or suits. All right. Um, if you want to find out about um, projects, you'll probably see an, uh, an IRC tag, and it'll be um, a good place to look to see what's going on. And this was quiet during European time. Um, the Matterhorn project is mainly out of America, and I'm seeing it was the chat was bas basically happening U.S. time. Okay, that's another thing they have to look at. Um, we ended up cho choosing Camtasia um, because there was a number of people uh, using, in, using it in the department. Darius uh, here is one. Uh, Steve Headley was using it. Um, I tried it and I could see that it worked. Now, the one thing I find with Camtasia is it is buggy. Okay, it can be worked around. Um, plus, the other side of the side of it was that it had the software had support. There was a knowledge base there. Okay, there was a support form. There was tutorials there. Okay, it might seem like simple stuff, but you know, when you're diving into this game, you kind of want to make sure that there's something there before you get into it. There's a link to Camtasia there as well. Um, Getting the right tie is the name of this slide. No, how am I doing for time? Okay. Um, we didn't have a huge budget, okay, and we wanted something that was upgradable, and we didn't want to be stuck or tied to hardware. I find one of the big problems with all this kind of stuff is the um, prospect of getting tied to hardware, for example, tied to an iPad or tied to an uh, iPhone or a Google Android or one of these platforms that they're there isn't multiple, you're better off to be in an open platform. Um, we ended up choosing a laptop. Uh, quite simple, it was portable, it had a microphone, it had a webcam, it had a multiple core processor, okay? This is said laptop, okay? Um, it's a normal Dell Latitude 64. This is out of date, there are 64. 20 now, I think, and it has this Intel Centrino 2 processor. What does that mean? It means it's got more multiple cores, all right, multiple processors, all right. Um, so you could lend, and the other part of this is you could lend it to everyone in the department. It could handle the complexity. Now, I'm sorry if I'm going to be technical, but when you're going into this kind of stuff, it's worth taking the time before jumping in. Um, Delivery of content, postman Pat there, I had to put it in, all right? Um, when we started off, first of all, we used just basically the UCC web server. And I just put a, uh, it, UCC web server uses Apache, which is open source, which is just a simple web browser. And we just put a username password authentication on it. Um, we're now starting to use Blackboard. And the great thing about Blackboard is you can track users, okay? So you can get stats, okay? You can get how many times they download the file, so you can see who's using it, who hasn't used it. Um, we haven't got eye tracking software in Blackboard yet. It would be nice if we could. Actually, we could see if their eyes are open or closed and that they're looking at the content. <laughs> All right? It's there, but you know, they haven't implemented it in, uh, in software, but uh, in Blackboard haven't come along with it. Um, when I go to deliver content, I give them the full video. I don't do streaming. Um, the reason why I don't do streaming is any of you looked at a YouTube clip that starts to go jerky? Well, if you try that in some parts of rural Ireland, it won't even go jerky. It'll just stop. Okay? Um, so that's why if you give a full, full video, they have the time to download. And they can either, it can, might take five minutes, it could take two hours. At least they can download it. Um, it also gives us the option of sending a CD. Um, other bits, yeah. What, what's streaming in that context? So streaming, you know when you look at YouTube, and you, know, you see the way when you click the button it automatically plays. Mm -hmm. What I do is I give the file. So I give an entire file and they download the entire file. So it doesn't happen automatically. They have to open the file up and click play. So I give the entire file rather than just the streaming content. because. It gives you the jerkiness, and you know a person can't watch something if it's jerky. Um, so that's other bits that we're doing, e bits um, in the department, I suppose. Um, last year we got we got a chance to spend a bit of money, um, thankfully, um, and we had to upgrade the building. Um, 
so we started bringing in video conferencing. Okay, um, this is probably nothing to do with teaching and learning, but um, what it does do is lecturers don't have to go to Dublin anymore. Okay, they don't have to go up, spend the night in Dublin, waste a day, and posh people like using an ROI, return on investment. We lose a lecturer for an hour, not a day. Okay. It means they can be more accessible to students, all right? Um, other bits, we have a moot court. Um, this year, um, it's starting to be used. Um, we, I went up to the new... We, we, there's moot courts all over America. Not too many of them around Europe and the UK. Um, but I ended up going up to the criminal court in Dublin to see their new setup up there. So we tried to model it as much as we could. And the reason we have TV screens is they're in the courts above in Dublin now. Okay, people have got to get used to this. It's all mic'd up, so they hear their own voice, so it makes it more real. Um, we can record video on there. Um, the slide fell off the page, but basically the equipment is a PC. Um, we have a visualizer, that's one of these. Any of you used visualizers? Yeah, okay. Um, very handy tools, um, mics, uh, projectors, and a camera layout just like this. The audiovisual department are great here in UCC, okay, to implement this kind of stuff. You won't get it everywhere because it's totally specialist. Um, next slide. Um, another thing I do is uh, a hands up IT survey when people come in, first years come in. Um, and Interesting stuff that I found in it was it gives us an idea of where to go to, where to go, okay, down the road. Um, so everyone owns a PC, everyone owns a laptop, 50% of people own a smartphone, um, everyone has a Facebook, okay, um, everyone has iTunes, 10% um, have a Twitter account, okay, um, and only 5% have a tablet or a Kindle, okay? I know they're new. Um, and I was kind of sh shocked at the Twitter thing. I thought we'd, there would be a lot more take-up on Twitter, but it just doesn't seem to be happening, whereas take-up on Facebook is really big. Um, I think it's just they uh, don't understand it, to engage in it. Um, what else have I... Oh, yeah, all right. This is a last-minute slide, because I had nothing written it. Um, I think really down the road um, focuses on infrastructure. Okay, you see Google released the Android on November the fifth, two thousand and seven, and they're now on release four point zero now, only after four years. That means the first applications that were developed on version one point zero may not work with four point zero. Okay, so that was a good idea to go off and develop on version one point zero because you've got to release a new version and a new version. Um, HTML is still with us after 10 years. <coughs> Hasn't gone away. Any phone that can't load a web page, you won't buy now. Um, so that's, the, that's where I see it going. It's, you have to look more at infrastructure, at the way of doing infrastructure, not look at, um, not look at the, the, the gadget type scenario, the iPad or the iPhone. It's just basic or Android. Um, I think that's it. Okay. Any questions or am I in trouble? Uh, follows on from something that Peter Flynn was saying this morning that we missed, but it was the, uh, the, the importance of having a, a common pathway. And it almost suggests that all the, the technology out there, although the whiz bang stuff isn't a great, perhaps not a great way to go for yeah. e learning. No. So if you get something that's common, like a PDF file or HTML, which hasn't changed in 10 yeah. years. Then something that's platform independent is going to work a lot better. So maybe the, the ingenuity of e-learning is going to come from the way it's applied rather than the platform yeah. you use. Um, I wrote this presentation on Open Office. Open Office isn't on these machines here. Um, pardon? Surprised it worked. Well, I actually had to saved it in um, Microsoft on Open Office, but I had it saved as a PDF because a PDF will work anywhere. Okay. And it's, that's what I talk about inf why I talk about infrastructure. Because PDF files are everywhere. 
you can get PDF files apps that will work on anything. Whereas, say, Flash, for example, won't work on an iPhone. Okay? That's where it comes out in for HTML, it will work on an iPhone. Because if they didn't run a HTML, it wouldn't work at all. Okay? No one would buy an iPhone. So, yeah. yeah. Just a question on PDF files. Are, they, um, are there different forms of PDF files because they seem to be very big some of them? They are big with pictures a lot of the time. Um, the, there's different specifications of PDF files as well. Um, but if you start putting pictures into them because they're bitmapped, so uh, when I mean it, each each dot is a, a piece of memory, so it has to be that's what fills them up. Yeah. 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 Yeah